got the rear fuel tank out of my 250. It's been leaking since I've had it and never used it, so I'm gonna put a new one in so I can have dual tanks. Just rusted through. I think it's like there's like a pinhole in this corner somewhere where it's leaking, like right there somewhere. You can't see it, but there's like a tiny pinhole, so. Here's the pickup. Completely gone. This is the shower head that's supposed to be on the bottom of the pickup and the screen. So all that's left of it, there's the pickup screen. It goes on there. So I'm gonna try to get a new one. If not, I'm just gonna put a longer rubber hose on this with a couple holes in it, extra holes in it on the bottom of it, you know, reuse this one. The main reason I want a sending unit is because I'm pretty sure the, the gauge mechanism, is the float, doesn't work for the fuel gauge, so I kind of want my fuel gauge to work. It comes out fairly easy, you just get this ring, and just tap it out, and you get the gas tank hook vent up top that goes in, which is this thing. It's in fairly good condition. It's inside the tank is just full of junk. It smells fairly bad. It smells like diesel clean, which is nasty, but I use it every fill up. Here are the two skid plates that hold it on. See so just how rusty they are. I'm going to clean them up and the spray them with rust stop. Here's the filler neck. So as you can tell, there's a thinner rubber hose coming out of the metal pipe. So all of this goes in. You get the point of just in the gas tank like that. So when you're filling it, the fuel actually comes through this hose and it vents around it through that slot right there. So you get a better view of it. Yeah, you can see that's, that slot right there, that's where it vents when you're filling it. Here's the view of the fuel tank removed to where it goes in. It's just holding my four bolts in the corners. It wasn't too hard to remove it. That bolt took about an hour to take out because it was rusted. So I had to start it and it got stripped, so I had to get it out. It took a while. Here are the lines you get. This is the vent tube. This just ends, goes to a dead end on the frame rail where it vents out. Your sending unit plug for the fuel gauge. You got your return line. I believe this is the pickup line. And disconnect these. You don't need any special tool or anything. You have these things that just go through them. It's kind of hard to show you, but they go in like this. I think they're one of the holes. There you go, they just go in like that, so to pull the fuel line out you just pop these out with a screwdriver and it, this comes off. You don't need any special tools or anything to do that. The only bad thing about this design is that once you pull off the skid pans there's no straps on the bottom holding the tank in, so once the, pan, the skid plates come off the tank pulls out. And you gotta remove them all the way and drop the tank about a good quarter of the way so you can get to the sending unit on top and unplug everything to get it out. It's not too heavy though. It took me about three hours to get this far. That is with one hour for removing that bolt, so. Well, I could not get a new uh, fuel sending unit for it. And this old one, the pickup shower head was broken off of. So I just put a piece of a uh, 3 8 
inch diesel ready fuel line on it with two clamps on it. And four slots cut in the end of it so it doesn't plug up or suck up against the bottom of the tank. I'm not sure if the fuel gauge will work, but if it doesn't work, I'm fine with that because I know how far I can go without a fuel gauge. I still like to have it working, but I'm not paying 300 bucks for one of these from Ford. So here's the new tank. It's a 19 gallon. I'm not sure what the old one was. The the computer says you can put a 19 or 18 gallon stock tank in it, so it's the one they had in stock, so I just got the 19 gallon. It was like one, 190 or something. I got a $30 discount, so I paid like 170 for it. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was 100 bucks. So I just paid a. Got the pickup in and everything. It was the. Now for the hardest part is you gotta get the fuel line, the return line, and the vent tube line, and, and the plug for the sending unit, the fuel gauge, all hooked up with the tank halfway put in. Because when you put it up all the way, all that is uh, covered up and you can't get to it. So you have to hook it up with the halfway installed. This is how you get to them. Um, under the under the truck, there's the other fuel things. The rear end. You gotta put the lines on, and then just put the skip pans on, which hold the tank in, and hook up the filler neck, and it should be done. There's how everything looks like hooked up. Now we gotta hook up the vent hose, which is this, onto the plastic nipple over there. Got, wood, got one skid pan on, not tightened down yet, but it's on, it's holding the tank in, everything's hooked up. Got the fuel filler neck to put on. This other skid pan. You can see I sprayed it was a rust stop, so they won't rust as much, and hopefully it'll won't rust up as much and rust the t new tank. I got all the new bolts that hold it in because they're rusted. They're rusted in this one up here. This is the bolt. It took about an hour to get this out because it was so it was seized up, and I stripped it. I had to get it out with vice grips. So got it all done. Got the fuel filler neck in. The new hose, new clamps. <coughs> get this. Good place all tightened up, all the new bolts. So yeah, hopefully it won't shouldn't leak. The fuel tank switch valve does work, I've tested it, so yeah, I have dual tanks again, which is nice. So yeah. Thanks for watching.